Hello everybody, Misfit here from the Co-op Guys, back with more Kerbal Space Program, and we recently just returned from a successful mission to Minmus, which went much, much more easily than I uh, expected, considering, well, we kind of held off on going to Minmus for quite a while. Uh, we could have accomplished that much earlier, but I went, I, I tried to go for Drace and failed. So, a bit premature, uh, but I'm pretty sure I could have done it if I had uh, organised myself a bit better. And we netted a lot of science on that mission, and the one thing that I bought was the skipper, the, the skipper, the mainsail engine, <clears throat> which is the most powerful engine in the game. And you also got a much larger fuel tank for the thing, uh, which holds a ton of fuel. Um, there's this previous kind of port, so twice as big as that. Uh, so yeah, um, just been trying to see what other things we want. I mean, we've got a lot of the tech tree filled out, but that's only, but that's the only one of the highest tier items that we can get. I think it goes all the way down to here, and they all cost 550 science. So even though we don't have a lot left, it's the most expensive stuff. But I was just having a look to see what. We're, what we could get. I mean, I'm really tempted by the Gigantor Solar Array, just because they are amazing. <laughs> um, that, um, I'm still not interested in the rovers or the jets yet. I am not done in space with space vessels and stuff. I haven't even got stuff of the probes yet. Um, I do like the idea of the probes, but you get more science when you get the materials back. Maybe I'll do some more probe stuff once we fill more of this out. We'll just do it for fun. In the meantime, I think we want to try and get as much science as we can just so we can fill out the rest of this. So I think we're going to go for this. It costs 550 science. It is the Gravioli Detector, which nets you a lot, a lot of science. And uh, a sensor array, which also gets you a lot of science, but you have to be within the atmosphere of a moon or a planet that has an atmosphere. Um, so, yeah, um, gonna grab that. And that's it, we've got 44 science left, and the cheapest one we have left to research is 90. So, that'll do that. Now, on to our next mission, and this one is a little different. You might enjoy it. Right, so here's what I'm thinking today. Uh, you can <coughs> get a lot of speed in space, right? And the best way to get a lot of speed in space is to foot over your orbit until you have as close a periapsis to something as possible. Uh, and if you, if we were wanting to get something going really, really fast, we would have a really high apoapsis and then bring it into a really small periapsis. So I figure for a bit of fun today, what we're going to do is we're going to try and get a craft moving as fast as possible through the solar system. And this is my first try doing this, and we're going to use this ship. Whoa! This is the Fire Streak 4. Not a, fa not a big fancy number or a big fancy name. This is actually the fourth version of this vessel that I've tested out. This thing is ridiculous. This is probably the largest ship I have ever made. This barely fit in the hangar. Um, we have got 24 of our brand new mainsail engines. We've got 11 nuclear engines. We've got a whole bunch of new things on this ship. Uh, I also, let's see if I can move the camera up, like that. We have our mobile processing lab here as well. Uh, trying that out for the first time, along with some wonky science equipment. Um, and some, <laughs> I've also made some in-flight, like you know these launch support things here? I've kind of made some to work mid-flight as well. So we're going to try out this whole thing, and we even have the original crew on this. And I figured they're test pilots, and this is kind of a speed record thing. Uh, I'm, I don't, I think some people might have actually have 
bigger speed breakers and all that. But I don't think I'm going to get anywhere near as high as that. But we're going to see how fast we can go. So without further ado, let us launch. And please do not fall apart. This thing is quite unstable. Uh, because every time I've made adjustments to this thing, I've had to add another layer of uh, these engines on the outside, and every time I do that, this thing kind of wobbles a bit like crazy. Um, that's why there's tons of struts and there's fuel lines all over the place. This thing is ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> this thing makes it look like there's a launch pad on top of the spacecraft, so without these, uh, without these supports though, uh, this top section was wobbling around like crazy and the whole thing just flew apart. Uh, one thing that's a bit annoying about this- oh crap we're already- oh that was a waste. Uh, yeah because we've got so many of these, uh, so many of these skipper uh, mainsail engines and they're all connected together into the middle, they've run out of fuel so so fast so that was a bit of a waste. Uh, I'll need to keep an eye on the staging there for the the rest of this mission. Let's just try and get some better camera angles going. Um, probably not the the best test of the most powerful engine, but you know what? It, this is fun. We're going for a speed record, Jebediah. It is loving the idea. These two are freaking out as per usual. So. This is going to be a very long launch, uh, and what what time is it in the day? Yeah, it's it's kind of sunrise, so we are kind of we're taking off at sunrise because what we're we're going to try and use the sun to to get uh, to get this kind of speed record thing going, uh, but considering we're going to be going to the sun essentially. I did pack a bunch, a bunch of science on this ship so that we could uh, get as much of it as we could. just just well you know we're in the neighborhood let's grab some science while we're there. Um, however these guys are probably not gonna come back. I will say that now. These guys are the, the immortal carbons I believe. Uh, so what's probably going to happen is either they're going to be stuck in a massive orbit around the sun or we're going to fling them out of the solar system. One of the two. Not entirely sure. Uh, it might take, this mission might take a couple of tries actually. Because um, I was, I, I tested this before just to see how this whole thing works. Because even though we're going for a kind of a, a misfit speed record here, um, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of slow movements, and a lot of hanging about. So, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. But we are heading straight up, and what the plan here is, we are taking off at sunrise. Which means the ship is facing this way. Now, Kerbin is going around the sun like this. Now, just like we would deorbit, like, if we, if this was Carbon and this was our ship, we would be, we would have, uh, in order to get closer to here, we have to fire away, or, or fire retrograde in our orbit. So that's exactly what we're doing here, because Carbon is firing, is, it was firing, Carbon is going this way around the sun, so this is our prograde, and this is our retrograde. So we are firing, we are uh, traveling in this direction, this here. So we are cancelling out Carbon's movement around the sun. So, oh, and I should check the staging. Yep, this is inefficient. Dump those, please. Oh, that's going to cost us. I actually had to redesign the top portion of this. Um, just literally to save on weight. This is the first time I've ever had to be concerned about weight on a spacecraft because every bit of fuel counts, and I've probably, I probably messed up just by... Uh, having those fuel tanks on longer. What what fuel? What engines are that? What's going on here? You're almost out of fuel. Why are you almost out of fuel? You shouldn't be almost out of fuel. 
You're full. You're full. Why are you almost empty? This is concerning. Something has happened. Something has happened here. I don't see a fuel line. What? What? No, no, there's the fuel line. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to keep an eye on that. It might be the... Oh, no, no, that is definitely draining completely. Something is not right. And it might be because I... Let's get to that. It's almost... <gasps> oh, crap. I sneezed too early. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, crap. No, 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 no. Oh, well... Yep. Well, that went swimmingly. <laughs> we haven't had a crash in ages. Thing is, uh, we're overdue for one. This top piece survived miraculously unscathed, apart from that engine being busted up. This good thing could still be flyable. Oh well. Let's try that again, shall we? Alright, take two. Um, got that fixed. Uh, there was actually a problem with the fuel lines. Uh, it's a little bit of a glitch in Kerbal Space Program, I think, actually. Um, when I removed... Because it was one of these... Another, uh, there was a second uh, RCS fuel tank here. So in order to remove that, I moved this entire assembly down, took the RCS fuel tank on and put it back up. But there were some uh, of those control tower support things holding these guys up. And when it regenerated the ship on the launch pad, the fuel lines were not connecting from the tanks to... From, from tank to tank, it was connecting from the tank to the tower. So that essentially cut the line which was a bit odd. I've also had the same problem with struts in previous designs, so... Should have expected that with this. So, fault on my end, but no matter. It's fixed and we're sorted. Um, I've also not got this ship throttled up full. I'm hovering about 80%, 75%, that kind of thing. There are two reasons for that. One, uh, this thing is gradually getting faster and I don't want to break 200 before we get past 10 kilometers as per usual. The second reason is that these mainsail engines have a tendency to overheat but nowhere near as much as these nuclear engines do and the fact that I've got these three nuclear engines in the middle surrounded by all these other engines means that they overheat pretty quickly and the fact that these three engines are right next to each other means they overheat pretty fast. So if I was to throttle up now even though I'm not, I'm actually going to throttle down a bit. Uh, if I was to throttle up now, those things would start overheating, and in one test, I believe, these actually exploded. The first time I've ever seen an engine explode. I wasn't keeping an, an eye on it, and I uh, was too busy focusing on the staging, and those things blew up, took half the ship with it. So, yeah. Um... So after the next uh, couple of staging, this thing should be okay. But we're just heading straight up, and now that we're above uh, 10 kilometers, we can throw it all up a bit more now. Um, we'll get to the point where the engines are just about to overheat, but not much. And get rid of those engines. Those uh, yeah, those tanks are empty. We'll just lose the engines. But yeah, once we get rid of these, this thing might start wobbling a bit. Um, I'm not entirely sure having the ACS on will be helping. And there we go, the nuclear engines are just starting to overheat. I think if you have engines close together, do, they do kind of heat each other up. So that uh, tends to affect the overheating of them. But I think we can carry on for a little bit without them blowing up. So yeah, we're firing away from carbon the opposite direction of his rotation to try and get us down to the sun. Now, this is my kind of plan, right? Uh, let's double check the stage. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so what we want to do is to try and get close to the sun on the first pass. Not too close, just close enough. Um, 
because I want to get maybe down to about here or here initially and then we will extend our apple apsis out as far as we deem necessary so that we we, we get really far out we can adjust our periapsis more f efficiently because few, further, despite the fact that this ship is massive fuel is going to become a major concern and here we go, the Sepertron stage this is where things start to get a little shiggly uh, oh so as you say about these supports despite the fact that the these like girder things look like they're connecting. First time I tried this, I got a really big surprise in the fact that when I made, I made this tower here and I made this bit here, even though they look like they're perfectly connected, they're not. The only thing that's actually connecting these two are these struts that I put in just to stop this thing wobbling about. So, entire structural integrity from the top of the ship all the way down to the bottom here is being held together by a pair of struts on each of these corners. So, so yeah, uh, how many we got? We've got six mainsail engines left. I keep on wanting to call them skippers even though they're mainsails. Uh, so because we're firing away from carbon, we will be coming down here. Because our orbit's going to end up in a ellipse like that. Between where our carbon is now and where the sun is. And I might cut some of this out because this is going to take a long time. Well, we'll get down to this stage here uh, because well, I might cut a little bit out. Because once we get to the the, the whole job of the main sails in this, even though they're not the most terribly, because now we're we're well into space, we are 50 kilometers away from the surface of carbon. Reaching a height of currently 105. So normally I would actually stop and I should have been burning that way if I wanted to go to orbit. But no, we're not even going to go to orbit. We're skipping that stage entirely. We are just burning straight. And straight and straight. That's why I took off at sunrise. So that I could do this. So, oh, and there's the moon down there. Hello. Uh, so because we're burning at sunrise, we don't need to go into an orbit or anything like that. We're not looking for accuracy. These guys are never coming back. I very much doubt they ever will. We might eat, we might crash into another planet or something, but they're never coming back. I didn't even put lights on this thing. I'm that concerned about weight. I did not put lights on this thing. I probably put too many of these Separatrons. Could have cut down on the RCS. Uh, probably could have got rid of these batteries. I only need some kind of storage. If I want to transmit some of the science back, we need some electrical charge. Uh, but the whole job of the skippers is just to get as far away enough from carbon for the nuclear engines to take over. Now we used the nuclear engines before, they take forever to burn um, because they're such low thrust but they're very fuel efficient. And here we go, that's the first of our... Uh, oh, oh crap crap. Yeah, uh... I had to put these, uh, these uh, little fuel tanks here because I want to transfer fuel from here up to here because after we get rid of these two I'm going to have the nuclear engines on this stage fire and from the nuclear engines up that is going to be our main craft um, and these uh, girders are going to go away but what I forgot to do was to put a couple of separatrons on these little bits because as soon as the as soon as these stage these trucks magically disappear and this becomes a free falling object <laughs> and smacks into the fuel, those little fuel tanks. Um, so, yeah, this ship is ugly. Well, at least the bottom half of it is. Once we get up to this stage, this thing actually looks pretty nice. Yeah, but these tanks are going to last a while. So, I'll tell you what, I will cut away here and we will be back when we are ready to stage and we're going to switch over to full nuclear engines. Alright, we're about to lose our last of our mainsail engines. Let's just hope that these. Uh, these supports do not break our ship. Stage! Ah, and they fall down gracefully because we lost pretty much all of our thrust. So let us now ignite the rest of our nuclear engines. BAM! There we go. Now, let's check the map. So this, the mainsail engines got us out to an apoapsis of just over 600 kilometers. 
I could have added more main sail engines, but at that, but you'd have to. I would have to have added a ridiculous amount more just to get a few hundred more kilometers. Um, and we are gaining an apoapsis. That's excellent. So yeah, we do got all eleven of our nuclear engines firing. I did actually have something else on this ship which I took off because of the weight problem. Uh, I had four nuclear engines here facing the other way. I had a ship with a reverse engine. Um, I'm not entirely sure why I put it on this craft, but it's an idea I want to use for future missions. Uh, it's because I have some in mind where the ships I'm going to build are going to be freaking massive. This thing it would be nothing in comparison. Um, but it would definitely be something I would have to build in orbit. Uh, I wouldn't be able to just launch the whole thing off the launch pad in one go, but as you saw with some of the, in some of the previous episodes, or you may have seen in the previous episodes, uh, when it when it comes to docking or uh, moving the ship around to get fine controls for an orbit, uh, the larger the ship, the more difficult it is to turn, and the larger the ship, the more unstable it is. So in the idea I was going to have was, instead of having to turn the ship around to move, you could have engines there to fire the opposite direction, because more often than not, you want to adjust your for your direction forward and back. So if you overshoot a maneuver, just fire up the reverse engines and uh, correct it. So it was a great idea. Unfortunately, the weight... Um, we had those four engines added nine tons of weight to the ship, so we had to get rid of it. And these th this these RCS fuel tanks was three and a half, so I got rid of one of them too. Uh, now let's check our app. This is up to eight hundred. Ah, this is going faster than I thought it was. And um, now it looks like we're moving at a snail's pace. We kind of are, but as soon as we escape from carbon. Our periapsis from the sun is going to drop down to about here, and we're going to keep on going down. Um, so yeah, this thing is good. This mission is going to take a while, especially for me. Uh, <laughs> but screw the camera angle. We are going to deploy our solar panels because we are far enough away where the atmosphere is well, definitely far enough away where the atmosphere is not going to affect us. So let's show off our solar panel. Very bizarre arrangement I've got going on because we got the straight ones coming out here uh, around the center. We've also got the shorter stubbier versions which I've added to the side of our science juniors. I, I put... <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I wasn't sure where to put these actually because I've got the mobile processing lab which I'll explain later. Um, and I had the design for the ship but I was like where am I going to put the, put the science juniors? I can't just slob them on the side, that would look too weird. So I just decided to have them dangling off like this, and it's kind of interesting. It's like a weird, like, pod or something that's just been attached to it. Because this thing kind of feel, it has a little bit of a space station feel to it. Um, but let us also do something else. We have a new communications array on here, and let us zoom in on this, because I want to show this off. And extend, please! Oh, oh. How cool does that look? That is amazing. And guess what? I got two of them. So now that we're on this mission, uh, I think it's only fair that we're powered, and considering these guys are going to go for a long distance away from Carbon, I think it's uh, we need to deploy that so that these guys can properly communicate back with Control on their very long journey. It's going to be a very, very long journey. Uh, let's see, how far are we out now? We are reaching 1.2 million meters and climbing. And the longer we burn, the faster that's going to climb. So, uh, I'm going to cut the recording here. Whilst we continue to burn away from carbon, we have been burning for seven minutes straight, almost eight, and we're going to keep on going. Uh, and I will come back when we have escaped carbon's orbit and we're in orbit around the sun. Alright, we are approaching carbon escape. 
Uh, I believe the escape velocity of carbon is like something like 2,200 meters per second. And it's not taking a lot of thrust to push us out almost a million meters every couple million meters every second. We're probably going to escape any moment now. There we go! Carbon escape has been achieved! So now let's have a look where we are in the solar system. We have a periapsis of 11 million meters. 11 billion meters, I should say. So it's 11 million kilometers and falling rapidly. Um, we have been burning for 11 minutes continuously the entire time. We still have a fair bit of fuel in this tank, but it's going down fairly quickly. We should get a bit of a speed boost when we jettison it though, because there's not a lot of extra thrust being added by these uh, these engines, so our thrust will go down, but our mass is going to drop considerably once we get rid of this thing. And I also have to wait for these guys to lose their fuel. And I also fixed the camera! I forgot there's a button to change the camera, so before we had it on auto, and then there's camera free, which for some reason locked the camera in place, or it does weird things like that. Um, orbital camera works brilliantly, because now we're in orbit, orbit around the sun, not Kerbin, so that's the angle we want from now on, and there's also chase, um, whoop, which flips the camera around crazy like, crazy like orbital, let's go back to that. Uh, Let's check and see where our periapsis is. already down to 8.9. Now, I don't want to get it down too close, though. Because if I get it down close, we'd actually just be achieving the speed that we want. So, th the plan for this, there's, there's two there's two or three ways I can go about doing this. I'm not sure which is the most efficient. Um, because I want to get the, the periapsis down close to the sun, but not too close. So that I can extend the apoapsis. I want to get the apoapsis out here. In fact, I want to get it miles out there. Uh, so I want to get as far away from the sun as I can so that I can come back. And when, I'm, when we're as far away from the sun as we, can, as we can get conceivably, I want to lower the periapsis so that when we come down we're going to go from being as far out as we can to as close to the sun as we can. And hopefully we'll get the, the speed boost that we need. Now, when we get to that stage, there's two things we can do. Either we use uh, all our fuel to get the periapsis as close as possible, or when we're about halfway back to the sun, we start burning towards it to get a little bit of an extra speed boost. I don't know what how that exactly how that's going to affect the periapsis and the apoapsis. I don't think we really care about the apoapsis at that point because it could fling us out of the solar system. But the periapsis it might extend it. I don't really know how it works because the the best way, the most efficient way to get to play this game is to adjust the apoapsis and the periapsis. So you don't really want to burn when you're halfway between them, but we will see. Anyway, we still got some fuel left to burn in this, so I'll join you again once we're ready to get rid of this fuel tank at the bottom and we're ready to utilize the our main craft here. Alright, we just lost our rear engines, and these little tanks are, are draining their last bit of fuel into here. And that should be them now. Just double check. For some reason, all but one of them had already emptied. That was the last one that left. So, let's get rid of this thing. Bye! And there we go. So, this thing is now much lighter. Eight nuclear engines with a 2800 fuel tank and four 360s. So, in total, we have four 320, so almost 4400 fuel. And should we continue to burn? That is the question. We're down to five uh, bajillion meters and falling. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm wondering. I'm, when to stop burning. I did test this before and I did actually get to the point where I ran out of fuel. That's why I did the weight uh, the weight reduction in the craft. I should probably say, I don't know how when I should stop 
the episode here. So if if the episode just kind of ends abruptly, I will be splitting it up into multiple episodes. So in case that happens, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.